Savior is born for us, Christ the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. In those days, a decree was sent out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was in the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem because he was at the house of the family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that there will be for all the people. For today in the city of David a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is morning, right? Yes. Didn't I see you a few hours ago? <laughs> the day's kind of getting blurred, I guess, because the fourth Sunday and Christmas Eve fall on the same day. But it just provides more opportunity for more prayer, more reflection, and more worship. Uh, I began reflecting on all of the Christmas uh, readings, the Gospels, about a week or so ago. And uh, what struck me is the great humility of God. And uh, I think there are two acts, especially in Jesus' life, that are very profoundly uh, humble. Probably the two most humbling acts the world has ever witnessed. The first being the one that we celebrate tonight, and that is God taking on human flesh, being born to us. And I think the next greatest uh, humble act that he did was picking up a cross, a cross that he didn't have to pick up, uh, but it wasn't just the wood, right, that he was picking up, it was you and me. But we're not going to celebrate that for a few more months, right, that's a little bit of ways still. Uh, I really want to reflect on this first act of humility. If we were to discuss who God is, I think we would all kind of come up with the same answers. We would say that God is all-knowing. We would say that God is perfect in and of himself, right? that he can see all things, that he's everywhere at, at once. And we would give him all of these, I guess, philosophical and theological attributes. And we would all agree that God is perfect. Therefore, why would he want to become a human being? And I thought about that over the week, and we can always give the theological thing, oh, he wants to come and save us. Yes, that's true. But I think something drove him inside to do that. See, God didn't have to do that. Again, he's perfect and in and of himself, and yet there's this desire inside of him to want to come and be among us, yes, to save us, but also to be with us face to face, 
to be able to experience every single thing that we experience and also so that we can put a face to this divine being. So think for a moment, God himself being a baby, an infant, born in a farmhouse in a manger. It is really hard to wrap your mind around such a thing. And what do babies do, infants, right? They cry, they need help. This is an infant that would have to learn how to talk, how to walk, learn the history and the traditions of his people. Right? He would learn the culture and the religion and all the rest of it. God did this, I think, out of love. That's how much God loved you that he decided to be born just for you. And when I say you, yes, I'm talking in the plural sense, but also in the singular. You are the cause of Jesus' birth. And not the cause of it necessarily in a bad way, because St. Thomas Aquinas would call that first sin of Adam and Eve, oh, happy fault, right? Because of that sin, God then broke into human history to reverse all of that. Out of love for us, right? And out of that great love and that humility, I think it stirs something in our hearts. And that's why we do what we do at Christmas. We decorate our homes, we decorate this home, okay? we go out and buy gifts for others, not so much so in the commercial sense, but because Jesus has stirred in me something, then I go out and I guess pay it forward, right, during Christmas. I get things for people that I love so that they know that they're loved. Not so much that the gift itself is the love, but that it came from me. And I know that uh, we also love receiving gifts. Sometimes I like receiving better than, uh, than giving, right? It's always nice when you get surprised and see something wonderful. And when you see that something wonderful, you, start, you stop, stop to think, wow, that person loves me. That's why they went out and got that little thing. It could be the smallest thing in the world. I know I shared the brown paper bag story with you a couple of years ago. I found a brown paper bag in my office today with uh, walnuts and chocolates inside of it. Right? I don't know if, I, if everybody knows that story, but my dad would do that for me. Uh, at Christmas, especially when I was a boy. And uh, a little girl did it for me and uh, left it there in my office. And I said, because of her inkling of love, right, she decided to get that for me. It's not the bag or the chocolates or the walnuts or whatever else is in there. It was the act. It was the act of Jesus being born that is the greatest gift we could have ever received. And it's so humble in nature, it's mind boggling. That's how much God loves us. That from his perfect, lofty nature, he comes down as a little baby, depending on his parents. And even throughout his life, being vulnerable. And in three or four months, as we go into Lent, I hate to jump the gun, we'll see that humbleness and vulnerability again, probably in an even more powerful way. So I guess as you go home tonight and uh, you get ready to start tearing up the gifts and getting them open and making sure that you got all good stuff, before you do that, try to really focus in on this beautiful gift of the baby, the baby who cried, the baby who called out for help in vulnerability to its parents. And think about that gift and know that that gift was for you and you could not have received a better gift ever. 
God himself, born in a manger in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. Yes, past history, but if you listen to scripture, it never, I got this from Bishop today, so I'm stealing this from him. It's never written in the past tense. It's always written as he's born right now. So when we celebrate this midnight mass, and even when you reflect on it, Jesus isn't born somewhere far away or a long time ago. He has to be born right inside of here. If he is, then you've caught the spirit of Christmas. God bless you.